بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري واسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم my brothers my sisters in Islam may Allah subhanahu wa taala accept from one and all and may Allah subhanahu wa taala make every minute that you have spent and you will be spending with us insha'Allah ta'ala in the scale of your good deeds. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. The topic that I have selected insha'Allah for you tonight is the Qur'an and music. How many of you here, by a show of hands insha'Allah, how many of you here are still listening to music? Raise up your hand honestly insha'Allah. Mufti Mink is not around yet. Don't worry. All right, mashallah, may Allah protect us all, y'all. Now, the reason, why, the reason why I picked this topic, and I want to give you a context to it, is that I myself was a musician before coming to the fold of Islam. And I used to play music professionally, I used to sing, I used to actually earn a lot of money through this channel. So I'm not here to tell you music is halal or haram. I'm not going to use the fiqhi perspectives and all this. I'm just going to share with you that personal part of my life with you and then move on to comparison between the beauty of the Quran and whatever else music industry is offering us. And then you, my brothers, my sisters in Islam will be making your own decisions inshallah ta'ala. So growing up in Egypt, I had no passion whatsoever in my entire life growing up other than becoming musician. Nothing else will make me happy but listening, playing instruments and singing those musical songs. Nothing whatsoever. Even I used to fight with my parents in order for me to pursue that career. Fast forward, I moved to Hong Kong city. I got married to a Catholic lady. Now you may wonder why she why I married a Catholic lady. I myself wasn't practicing Islam at that time. But in Hong Kong, I formed a band and I pursued the same career, music, singing, dancing, and whatever else you can imagine in that industry. May Allah protect us all, Ya Rab. And there was one singer in Hong Kong who was known to be the biggest, the Asian biggest superstar. His name was Leslie Chung. And this man was so popular to a point that I wanted to achieve whatever he had achieved. I looked up to him. I tried to reach his production company. I tried to compete with him until one day, all of a sudden, he threw himself off one of the hotels in Hong Kong to death. He killed himself. He committed suicide. And that was the turning point, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And you may ask yourself now, why someone like him, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed with so much money, so much fame, good looking, movies, people would come from all across Asia just to attend his concert, why would such a person end his own life in that fashion? And that was the wake-up call. During that very period, I had a singer friend who I was discussing with, and he told me, you know, man, if I had the opportunity, I would quit music immediately and do something else to earn money. I know what we are doing is haram, but we don't know anything else. And as he was walking in his apartment, I was reflecting over what he was saying, he started reciting one of the ayat of the Qur'an. And I wanted to recite to you that ayah, my brothers and sisters, because every time I recited, up until this day, I recited it in, I recited in the same tone that I heard it the first time from this friend. He said, he recited the following ayah. 
قل يا عبادي الذين اسرفوا على انفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله ان الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا انه هو الغفور الرحيم tell them oh Muhammad those who have transgressed against themselves those who have sinned day and night tell them despair not from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah forgive all sins minor or major why is that so because Allah's quality is mercy and forgiveness this ayah my brothers and sisters in Islam in particular had left an impact on me up until this day. This was the day that I decided that the Quran is the path to peace and security and not music. How many of us, after listening to a new song, you would be excited about the melody, you'd be excited about the lyrics, but after a few weeks, you're bored to listen to that song again. Not so with the Quran, my brothers and sisters. Not so with the Quran. So I'm going to run to you, run with you, inshallah ta'ala, the points that I prepared for you, a comparison between the beauty of the Quran and what the music industry is offering us. And you decide whether what you're listening to is halal or haram. You be the judge. Sometimes, wallahi, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we do not need scholars to tell us what's halal and what's haram. You know it. Just like the brother who was arguing with me one day told, telling me, don't tell me smoking is haram. He started the conversation like this. Do not tell me cigarettes or smoking is haram. So what do you want me to tell you, Yan? <laughs> what do you want me to tell you, brother? He said, it's makru. I said, okay, if, if you don't consider it haram, can you lit a cigarette right now? Can you take a cigarette and lit it up? So you took the cigarette and I told him, but before you lit it, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So the brother looked at me like, can, can, we, can we do that, brother? Why not, man? We were taught in Islam, before we begin any action, we say what? Shout at me, brothers, please, and sisters. Bismillah. But why don't you say Bismillah before smoking? And after you finish, say, Alhamdulillah, who, who burned my lungs, you know. <laughs> Look at this. We don't need, we, Wallahi, sometimes there are actions. We do not need scholars to tell us. We know, deep inside, we know it's wrong, it's haram. But just we can't find a way to get rid of it. May Allah protect us all. One of the things that... I love so much about the Quran is the origin, the origin of the Quran. Whenever you read the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testifying that it is His word. Ar-Rahman Allama al-Quran. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, is the one who taught the Quran. That's the origin. It's from high, it's from your creator who knows what is good and what's bad for you. That's the Quran. Indeed, it is us who have revealed the dhikr, the Quran, and it is us who will guard it from any corruption. But what's the origin of music, my brothers and sisters in Islam? It's created by faulty human beings who are full of desires. And Islam, my brothers, my sisters, is not based on what you think, what you feel, and what you believe. It is based on the knowledge revealed by Allah in the Quran and your level of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His command. That's why Allah in another ayah said, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Know by your Lord, they are not considered fully believers. Until they make you, O Muhammad, the ultimate judge about that which they have differed over. And they should not find within themselves 
any shame to practice and to accept that judgment. And they should submit to this judgment completely without any objection. That's Islam, my brothers and sisters, Islam. And music does not offer that. Let's talk about some of the themes that are found in the Quran and music. And I'm having, I have with me some samples for you, inshallah. The Quran revolves around two concepts, basically. There are many other themes, but these are the two main concepts. Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and ibadah, which is your main purpose of why you were created. I have not created jinn nor mankind except to worship me, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran multiple times. One of them, Innani ana Allah, la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqim is salata li dhikri. It is I, Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except me. Therefore, worship me and establish the salah for my remembrance. This is the Quran, my brothers and sisters. It is there to help you fulfill that purpose. Because without it, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. And that's why 17 times we are reminded, at least while when we are praying our daily prayers during Surah Al-Fatiha, to say, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. You alone, Ya Allah, we worship. And you alone, we ask for help. But music, on the other hand, look at what themes in one of the sample that I brought for you here. And I'm not sure if you will recognize any of these songs, but here we go. One of the songs that I came across, listen to the words very carefully. Let's go all the way tonight. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. Let's go what? All the way tonight. No regrets. Yeah? Just love. So you sit together all night. I love you. I love you too. I love you three. I love you four. I love you forever and ever. That's all what we're going to do tonight. That's the song. <laughs> Just love. And then they said, I, I think the, the singer is a female, say, we can dance until we die. It's like I feel like somebody in the background say, Takbir, they're going to die. Allahu Akbar. You know. Can you imagine? The Prophet وسلم, said what? مَن مَاتَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ بُعِثَ عَلَيْهِ Whosoever died upon any action will be resurrected upon the same action. Can you imagine you're dancing? in And then the angel of death comes. Look at this. Look at what we're listening to, my brothers, my sisters in Islam. You and I will be young forever. I don't know how after they die, they will be young. I don't know. So if you guys can, can solve that riddle, let me know, inshallah. Uh, the benefits of the Quran. Let's talk about the benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in multiple locations that the Quran is a healing, a source of protection, a light, a guidance. Throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna hadha al-Quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. This, Qur this Quran guides to that which is most appropriate. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we wanted our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine to be free. We wanted to bring Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa back to the rightful owners. How could we bring Palestine back if we are drowned in those addictive behaviors of music and movies and sitcom and whatnot? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu arda when he received the keys of Jerusalem, his legs were full of mud from the travel. Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah came to him and told him, 30 bishops or 33 bishops are waiting for you. Is this how you're going to, you know, come and meet them? So Umar ibn Khattab said the following, and I hope and I pray that we will take this as a lesson in life. He said, Ya Abu Ubaid, O Abu Ubaid, nahnu qawmun a'azzana Allahu bil Islam. We are people who were dignified and honored through Islam, through, through this beautiful religion. 
If we were to seek honor through any other means, Allah will humiliate us. And then he said to him that they respect us. Those bishops, those people who are waiting for us, they respect us not because of our clothes and garments and status. They respect us because of our values and principles, because of Islam. So let us stick to, to Islam as much as possible, to the best of our ability. But music, what benefit do we get? I want anyone in the room, inshallah, to tell me what is the benefit of the following song? I believe I can fly. He's so convinced, you see? I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. This guy, either a liar or a jinn. Because only jinn can touch the sky according to the Quran. And then he's saying what? I'm thinking about it every night and day. Like he left everything, khalas, no work, nothing. He's thinking about how to fly. These are the songs that we're listening to, my brother. I know that these quite old, these songs are quite old, but I hope that you're getting the gist of it. Content-wise, the Quran, Allahu Akbar. A road map to success. A road map to Jannah. The content of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also it is a means of directing you to that which is right and prohibiting you from doing that which is haram, which is illegal, which is wrong, which is harmful to you. An example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu lima taquluna ma la tafaloon Kabura maqtan inda Allah an taquluu ma la tafaloon O you who believe, and here's an exercise for you, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Anytime you pass by a verse in the Quran that starts by Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, whatever comes after it, it is either a prohibition to stay away from or a command for you to follow. In the case of the ayah that I just recited, Allah is reminding us, O you who believe, why do you say that which you don't act upon? Why do you say something that you don't do? Indeed, it is one of the gravest sins to say something that you don't act upon. This is some of the content of the Quran, warning against what is, what is wrong, what is haram, what is harmful, and always a direction to that which is beneficial, that which will lead you, inshallah ta'ala, to the ultimate success of Jannah. But music... Look at this song. I don't know where I found it, but it says, uh, Only I think about him on the weekdays and weekends. I don't know if you recognize that. I don't know why. I didn't listen to it. I saw the lyrics. Only in the morning and the evening. Only. Yeah? Only when I wake up or sleep in. Only. And then the song goes on, and then uh, the, the, the last part is my favorite. I'd go to hell and back. I'd go to hell and back if I could go there with you. And then at the end, what do I do? Well, you said you're going to go to hell, so yalla, go hell. She said you're going to go to hell and back. I don't know how would she manage to do that, go to hell and come back, subhanAllah. And look at this. Look at the rubbish that sometimes we give our ears and hearts to. And I want to say something, and I want to make a statement. As I mentioned, I came from that background, and I know how addictive music is and songs. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters in Islam, this is my own statement, and I'm sure if there are any musicians out there, Muslim musicians out there, can confirm what I'm saying. But I say that the only thing that can compete with the Quran, with the words of Allah, is music. The only thing that can take your heart away from the Quran and dhik, the dhikr of Allah is music and songs. And I want people later after the lecture to meet me outside and confirm or deny this statement. Calling. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us in the Quran. The beauty of the message 
the beauty of the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu stajibu lillahi wal rasul. Oh, you who believe, again, another ayah that starts with, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Allah is addressing you and I, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Respond. Respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger. Respond to that which will give you life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. This is the true life. I had a mentor, a sheikh of mine back in the days used to say, are you, are you living or are you alive? He used to give us that quiz sometimes during the classes. Are you living or are you alive? Some people will say we're living, some people will say we're alive. And then he will quote this ayah, I say, every believer should be alive in this dunya and alive in the hereafter. Alive here by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His commands, even if it goes against your own will. That's, that's life, that's true life. You're fulfilling the very purpose of why you came to this dunya. But living, there are many other creatures who are living with us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated your status and gave you a brain to think and differentiate between variety of options, evil and good and so on. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Allah created you in the best shape ever. So use that. Otherwise Allah will bring you to judgment. May Allah protect us all, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But what is the calling? What does these songs are calling our children to? Now, this song, I'm sure everybody knows it. I am, not me, but the song, I am a Barbie girl. I know that some people will cut this video and make something, you know. I am a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life is, life is what? Anyone remember? Life is a plastic, Allahu Akbar, look at this. It's fantastic, yeah? The part that I hate the most. You can brush my hair, undress me everywhere. These are the words that sometimes we buy and give to our own children. Now they say, brother, but Barbie is a doll. Not anymore. If you're following the news, Barbie is no longer a doll, right? Barbie now is a famous actress, real life actress. And when our children get these lyrics and they imagine how Barbie is going to look like, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajaun. This is the invitation. And then we blame them later on when they can't stand reading the Quran because they are drowned with this addictive behavior to this imagery, to cartoon and these songs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the right understanding. I want to end because the time is running out. I want to end with something else aside from the music because it's all related. The movies that we watch, the TV series and sitcom that we watch. And I will never forget the impact of one specific movie on my own grandmother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon her soul and forgive us all. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. But this movie was like that. The girl in the movie, she planned to run away with her boyfriend. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'un. I think in every culture there is a movie like that. Wherever you come from, I'm talking about the Egyptian version. All right? And she decided to steal her father's car key from his room. And he was asleep. So she opened the door, and you know the suspense sometimes, the door would be like, uh. yeah. She entered, she opened the cupboard, the father was disturbed a little bit, like as if he got a little bit annoyed and all of a sudden out of nowhere my granny sitting next to me she made a dua she's watching a movie for god's sake it's unreal it's not real she made a dua ya rab ya allah don't let the father wake up please <laughs> my granny was praying for the zina to happen inna lillahi wa inna lillahi wa how many of you guys have watched those movies of uh, bank robbery? Hollywood bank robbery. Raise up your hand. Let me see your hands. Mufti Ming is not, not yet here. Don't worry. <laughs> He's not going to judge you. So. How many? How many? Raise up your hand. Keep your hands up. Okay. How many of you honestly were hoping that those bank robbers will get away with their crime? Raise up your hand. Allah, look at this. 
the impact, the impact of visuals, the impact of what we hear will impact our behavior sooner or later. May Allah protect us all, Ya Rabb. I have 10 seconds and I wanted to do one thing, inshallah. And if you could just shout back at me, whatever I say, can you shout back at me? Can we agree on this? Can we agree? Yeah. Allahu Akbar. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Jazakumullah khairan, my brothers, my sisters in Islam, please include our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon their martyrs and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return al-Masjid al-Aqsa to those who deserve it. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.